Jeff, huh? Answer me when I'm talking to you. If you're speaking to me, then use my name. It's Mister. <laughs> he wants us to call him Mister. He must be something special. And above all, take your hat off. <laughs> What's so funny? Get back to work, all of you. Come on. Move, or I'll make you wish that you'd never been born. Good. That's how to treat him. You know how hard it is to get work out of these lazy peons. I can see it's a strain on you, but you seem to be pretty successful at it. They're working for you. Uh, what about telling me what you wanted? Oh, nothing. Now that I see that you are a gentleman, perhaps you don't know that you're in the land of Senor Masterton. He is a gentleman like you are, however. Well, of course. Now rest for a moment, then I'll go. All right? Take your time. Come on, put some muscle into it. Here comes Senor Masterton now. You ought to be ashamed to let him see how lazy you are. This work should have been finished by now. We can't keep the railroad waiting any longer. I know, Senor Masterton, but these are all lazy dogs. That is not true, Senor. We have been working like slaves for you. You are demanding too much from us. <laughs> be quiet. That's enough out of you. Hey, you there. If you behave like that with men who can defend themselves, who are you? Someone who's able to defend himself very well. We shall see about that. you've seen, or better yet, felt. Huh? And perhaps seeing that you're a gentleman, you'd like to deal with pistols. Isn't that what gentlemen do? Yeah, but you've drawn already. You're gonna kill me? Why don't you draw? <laughs> Too bad. You could have had this one. I was planning to kill you off with a high-class silver bullet. 
like a gentleman deserves. But you prefer to lead one. That's modesty for you. Oh, you feel a bit better now? Yes, we all do, Senor Silver. And here is your thousand dollars we collected. We give it to you gladly. One thousand. Good, Alonzo. You're a man of your word, like I am. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. My wallet. Sorry, I ain't got nothing in my pockets. Just holes. <laughs> Why bust up everything? If you're looking for something in my coach, just ask me about it. Quiet. Look, Mr. Sullivan, they know everything. Can't you see that by now? I told you that thing stolen from the passengers can identify us. Take your stuff back. I know that, boy. <laughs> Quiet. I'm sorry, Isabel. You shouldn't have done that. That whistling. Idiot. Idiot. If you hadn't tried to steal our necklace, we wouldn't have had to kill him. Give me a shot. You got the money? Pot is mine. 
That's all for me. No, no, it ain't. When people play here with us, they stay into their last five dollars. And that's what you'll do. We were just passing through. Thought we'd play a game or two. Win or lose a few bucks. You understand. Nobody told us you had rules here. <laughs> I wish we'd known before. By me. I'll stay. I'm out. <laughs> Three kings. Wait, wait, just a moment, Freeman. I got it straight. Was you watching, Jose? Yes. We caught you cheating. You'll be my witness, won't you, amigo? You saw him, didn't you? Yes, I did, Mr. Freeman. Get out of here fast. You cheated. I could put you in prison. Stranger, but I don't have my gun. I'm sorry, Freeman. But I wasn't cheap. I wasn't fairly. Same as always. It'll be for the judge to decide. Well, as they say, justice will try. Well, we finally got rid of that Freeman. Yeah. But not counting repairs. You know what it cost? A thousand dollars.
Hey. Here. Here's your lunch, Mr. Silver. You can have that too, boy. If you can pay. Would you like to join me? There's enough for two. Surely you aren't going to eat that dog food. I can't even watch you eat it. In short, though, our stages have been held up four times this last year. You still don't know why this time all the passengers were killed. I have an idea how it happened. Obviously, someone must have recognized one of those bandits and was silly enough to talk about it. But this doesn't help us a damn bit. The question is, what are we going to do now? We'll do everything we can. Post a reward. Ah, Parker's always the man for brilliant ideas. Posting a reward is of no value whatsoever if we don't know who we're looking for. Then you tell us what we're supposed to do, will That's you? That's just what I've been waiting to do. I've decided, gentlemen, that to solve this case, we're in need of the John Pinkerton Agency. That's no solution, Finley. Can't you see that the Pinkerton agents will find themselves facing exactly the same problem that confronts our friend the sheriff? What could that be? They have to respect the law. There are limits to their work. Every move is written in the records. They have to find proof that cannot be questioned and then bring the guilty man to trial. That's right. I don't care a hoot about the rules. I just want the dollars consigned to this bank to get here safe. Then what do you do now, Mr. Averill? Well, I don't think that you'll be in agreement with me, Sheriff. I have a plan I'm putting into action right away. I'll offer a reward, but not to everyone. To one man alone. He'll take the responsibility for whatever he's doing. Not a bad idea. Wells Fargo would be willing to contribute. But who is this man? I'm told that you've got a real rambunctious fellow in your lockup. Yeah. He killed that Freeman who was always causing us trouble in the saloon. And he's really good. What happens now? Is the judge going to try him? I'll have to let him go. Self-defense. Have you gone crazy, Averill? You want to hire a professional killer for this? Let's have your suggestion. You advise giving the job to our preacher? Now, can you tell me how it is I'm given the honor of having you as a guest at my table here? Ah, you want to know why I'm in prison? Hmm. Nothing serious. Well, I beat a guy up. They let me out today. What did you go and get yourself arrested for? I shot a man. But it was done in self-defense, and it was legitimate, therefore. Ah, you mean that you was forced to do it? No, I mean I was paid to do it. <sighs> My fee's a thousand dollars, but I only kill criminals, and even if they are, I give them a chance. A chance to defend themselves. What's happened, Sheriff? Has my innocence touched your heart? <laughs> you clear out of here, too. Hold on a minute, Silver. There's a job for you. Really? Don't tell me you need my help. It's Mr. Averill. He's over at the bank. My fee's $1,000 a head. Boy, that's a lot of money. What do you want, Mr. Finley? The world's full of troublemakers and people who want to get rid of them. If I didn't keep my prices up, I'd have to work from morning till night. It's a tough job, believe me. As my granny used to say, after bringing up 15 children, she... Leave your grandmother out of this and let's talk like men, Silver. It's Mr. Silver. All right, Mr. Silver. $1,000 a head. Is it a deal? 
Not yet. You see, I'm forced to ask for an increase. I don't understand. Why? Because in this case, I not only have to eliminate the bandits, I also have to find them. And that takes time. We're businessmen, Mr. Parker, and we know that time is money. All right, Silver. Mr. Silver, 2000 ahead. With a $10,000 bonus, as soon as you wipe out that bunch of bandits, that's a deal? All right. I thank you, gentlemen. And I hope that I won't let you down. Oh, of course, I have exclusive rights. Exclusive rights? I don't want competitors. What's that supposed to mean? I don't like competition. One is forced to get there first. Makes one very nervous. All right, I'll give you exclusive rights for two weeks. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. You see. I'm putting down a lot of money on this game, so you just be sure and give me some good cards, you hear? Give me a shot, will you? Nope. You're joking, ain't you? You've already had your three dollars worth. You think I ain't got no more cash? That's right. Ah, uh, you're making a great mistake. Everyone gives me credit. <laughs> give me the bottle. No. Give me the bottle. No. Nope. Then you forced me to take it. I'm giving you one more chance to give me that bottle. <laughs> no. Then I'm gonna have to beat you to a pulp. Give me it, you hear? What's this? What's going on? Let go of me. I'll have the law on you. Put me down, you hear? I'll complain to the management. Let go of me. Let go of me. Let me go. Let me go. Evening, Mr. Silver. Evening. Let me go! It cost a lot, but I guess it was worth it. That's an efficient little police force you got there. They belong to Mr. Parker. They cost much less than a thousand dollars. Must you go away? I'll stay around. Beth. Why are you doing that? Have you won it? Should I have. With what? Three eights. But I had a full house there. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, keep your eyes on the cards and not on the girls. Luck ain't as easy to find as young women, especially those over there. <laughs> Stop that, you thick-headed cow. Calm down. It is your deal. This is yours. With the compliments of the house, Mr. Silver. There's no charge. And come again. Now, wait, guys. Now, how is it to when I turn to look at a girl, I lose, even when I'm holding a winning hand? <laughs>
He's wrecking the place. Finish him. Go on. I'll give you a thousand dollars for him. It wouldn't be self-defense. not to throw self-respecting men off on the sidewalk. I'm gonna break you in two. One. of the house. Oh. <laughs> All right, get up. Come on, on your feet. Well, it seems that as well as half a chicken, I owe you my life, Silver. Nonsense. I'd have thrown the chicken away. You don't owe anything to me. Hey there, Spud. Yeah. You forgetting our game of poker? Come on, we want to finish it tonight. Coming. Will you look at the condition they left this place in? Fred, let's clean up this mess. Will you give us a hand here? What's wrong? You're getting soft? Why didn't you kill him? So as not to give you the chance to pull me in. Right now, I have a job to do. I'd like a word with you, Silver. Mr. Silver. <laughs> All right, then, Mr. Silver. I want you to cooperate. And I'll share what I know with you. Why do you think I come here every night? Hmm? Huh? To feast your eyes? At your age, it's quite normal. Those bandits. I'm looking for someone throwing away his money. But they're much too smart. Or too far away. Seems impossible that all seven of them can be so smart. It's enough for one of them to be smart. And to have convinced the others not to divide the loot till the noise dies down. Because they must be from these parts. They were much too careful not to be recognized. Unfortunately, it's a kind of a blind alley. Then what good's this cooperation you offered? Hmm? Well, what are those? Two teeth. They were found where those four people were killed. They were lost by one of the bandits. Well, if you could check over men's teeth, like horses, you'd be one step ahead. But I don't need these things to find them. You don't say. I sure do. I already know two of them. Who are they? You gotta tell me, Silver. Well, it wouldn't be of any use. I have no proof. And names without proof don't interest you. You've said it yourself, right?
Mr. Silver. Are you sleeping? Stop where you are. Come here. <laughs> Shut up. I'm protecting you. This is the only corner that's safe. What do you, what do you mean it's safe? <laughs> Be right back. I have something to do. Now, do you know what I meant by safe? It's Austin. Go on, don't stand around here. Go on home. He needs an undertaker, not a doctor. Go call Chang. Get going, will you? You heard what I just said. Go on now. Go ahead. Self-defense. There's no doubt about this, is there? Nice work, Silver. He was the only lead I had. Sorry I didn't let myself be used for target practice in the cause of Justice Sheriff. But don't you worry. I still know that other pair. Go on, all of you. Go on. This ain't none of your affair. Get on home now. Come on. Here I am. Where is the unfortunate body? There. Please, this man, he has some relatives here. You mustn't mind my asking, but the county pays us so poorly. Give me a hand. Now then, does anybody recognize him? Not even you, doll? Oh, you should know just about everybody around here. Hey, Judd, take over here. Right, Sheriff. All of you clear out. Go on home. Have you a connection with the deceased, sir? It is my humble opinion that every human being alive is entitled to a decent funeral. But it may not yet be understood that each profession has its rights and its requirements, even though they are modest. <laughs> you shall see, sir, that with only small expense we shall provide a most tasteful funeral for your unfortunate friend. Do you agree to this, sir? Roll the body over. I said roll him over. So what we do now? To who? To your unlucky friend. Whatever you want. He ain't my friend. Well now, why didn't you wait for me? I acted like a fool. I should never have come. Let go of me. Not before you tell me what you were doing in my room. My name is Janet Sullivan. My father was the bank clerk who was killed last Friday. I'm sorry. How can I help you? I've been told that you were given the job of finding the men who killed my father. Perhaps I can help you a little. My father knew all along he was going to be murdered. No, Janet, this was an accident. The bandits had no intention of killing anyone. Someone forced them to do it. For a while before he died, Pa was worried and nervous. Janet, he said once, I'm an honest man. You'll always remember that, won't you? He was honest. Don't those words have any meaning for you? Not much. I just wish your father had talked a bit more. Uh, take a look among his papers. Maybe if he didn't talk much, he wrote. I've looked and found nothing. But you've an idea who's guilty, haven't you? I have. Yes. I heard you tell the sheriff as I passed by a while ago. I wish you were right, but I'm still completely in the dark. You know how mice are caught. By setting up a trap with cheese? Well, I'm supposed to be the cheese. And now, Janet, it's late. You'd better go home.
Oh, oh, wait, hold on. One. Ah, oh, you're here all ready to collect. Look, who says that that man was one of those bandits? The sheriff. He even has the proof. Two decayed teeth. Very well, I'll have a check made out to you for $2,000. I don't want it. What's that? I don't want the money. Why not? I didn't earn it. Because it wasn't me who killed him. Someone else shot him from the back. I've been cheated. Someone else was hired. I was given... Exclusive rights, Miss Dave. Am I wrong? You followed me. You mean you noticed? Whatever gave you such an idea? Orders from the sheriff. Huh. Sheriff. Persistent. Did he give you orders to shoot me in the back if you can, huh? What do you mean by that? Hey, Spot. Come here, will you? I want to talk to you. I'd like you to do a small job for me. Sure thing, Mr. Silver. Be glad to. Hello, Judd. Hello, Janet. Where are you heading? To the bank. Mr. Averill said he wants to see me. Let's go together. Wish I could, but I'm on duty. Um, by the way, may I ask you why you were talking last night with that killer, Silver? Is this an official inquiry, or could it be personal? You did a good job getting rid of that pest Judd for me. Oh, I ain't asking to be paid, Mr. Silver. I'm just glad that I had this chance to be a bit of help to you. What do you want, then? To give you a hand if you let me. Why do you want to do that? Well, uh... Don't tell me it's gratitude, because I won't believe you. Well, the truth is, I'm hankering to learn your profession. You want to be an apprentice? Mm hmm Well, for today, come along with me. The road's long, and I get bored when I travel alone. Ho! Alonso? Hello, Senor Silva. Yeah, how things go? Better? Thanks to you, things are going well for us. I'm glad. Alonso, you've worked the land around here for years. Do you think you could tell me where one finds blue clay? Ah, I can tell you. When you dig down deep in a well, you find clay like this. I hear that the Southern Pacific Railroad has dug one just recently. 
It is at Williamstown. They wanted to set up a water tank at the station there for their locomotives. Thank you, Alonso. I was sure you'd know. Hasta la vista. Señor Silva. Carson City. Yeah, I know. Well then, take it. And you? I have things to do. But you promised you'd teach. I didn't promise a thing, but if you wanted a lesson, here's one. When you've got things to do, never let anyone get in your way. Alonso was right. Oh, what a surprise, Sheriff. You sure can be dramatic. Yeah, I sure can. I swear, I didn't ever expect to find you here. Instead, I was waiting for you, Mr. Silver. As you can well see, it's been a waste of time getting rid of Judd. Come in. And keep your hands up. Well, isn't he a sight? My Chinese friend would be quite disturbed. Who is he? You should know. His name was Craddock. He was Austin's partner, the other watchman of the well. Austin? The man you killed last night. Don't talk nonsense. Your deputy should have told you it wasn't me who killed him. Yeah, he told me. And he told me, too, what it was you found under the dead man's souls. That's why I'm here. Actually, I should thank you I was able to identify him. My compliments. You left after me and arrived before me. He says you arrived first. Of course. And then? As every respectable murderer does, I came back to the scene of the crime. So you could catch me. Look at that, Sheriff. This time, you can't plead self-defense. You're even a bigger fool than I thought. To make that hole, it takes at least a 45, a gun I've never used. Take a good look at it. It's not a vulgar cannon like yours. It's a 32 with a long barrel. It makes neat, clean wounds. A joy to behold, and cheaper, too. My grandmother used to say, never waste money. Someday, Silver, I might lose my patience. another customer for you. You don't mean that. But he was sheriff here years ago when our town first started. Well, that's why. He could have become bored. After all, being sheriff isn't amusing. But he was one of my father's best friends. That doesn't mean anything. Or it could mean a lot. 
You see, there's one thing that has me worried. Last night, I set up that trap for his benefit only. And shortly afterwards, I was shot at from the roof. I heard you say in public you knew who two of the bandits were. Afterwards. Beside Austin's body. But I had said it before, to the sheriff alone. Talking about Austin and a certain Craddock. Have you noticed these names in your father's papers? I don't recall. But I'll look again if it's important. It could be. What are you doing here? Judd, don't be so impolite. I was discussing some very important matters with Mr. Silver. You don't know Silver. When he's got nothing better to do, he just loves to play stupid jokes. If you come here for this, wait outside. If I don't want to? Well, that would mean you came for another motive. You stop it, Judd, right now. Stop it, I told you. Yeah, to punch you. Well, if you put it that way... <laughs> I was saying. It could be important to find out something about those two. Chasing big spenders. How's your chase going? Bad, very bad. Mm. As soon as I find the right guy, someone sees to it that I find him dead. So I've decided to start at the beginning and find the chief. You know who their boss is? Well, let's put it that I know all about him. As I was saying, I know all about him. He must be someone with a certain standing here. Otherwise, after having done the job, he would have left. Don't you think? And he must also have been a man of a certain reputation. Or he couldn't have convinced his men to let him hold the money. And last, but not least, he must be a very capable man. Because I'm sure only one or two of his men knew his identity. The two that are dead, let's say. What do you think? Huh. Seems to me like you were painting my portrait. You think so? This is old granddad's specialty. My grandma used to be crazy about it. Ace is an eight, the dead man's hand. The dead man's hand are the cards that Wild Bill Hickok was holding when someone snuck in and shot him in the back. It brought bad luck to him, but to me, no. <laughs> With these cards, I win every time. Whose deal is it, gentlemen? I don't know how you can drink this stuff, Silver. Matter of taste, Sheriff. I like it. It uh, stimulates my imagination. Yeah, that I've noticed. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Silver. Good evening to you. How are things? Just fine. I've been waiting for you. Seems I can't walk into my room without finding a woman in it. And you don't like that? No, that depends. 
The last lady that I found here had a rather mysterious story to tell me. What about you? Isn't it obvious? What do you want? Is your welcome to visitors always this warm? That depends. Depends on what, Mr. Silver? On what they want. And you, for example, what have you come here for? I've got something might interest you. What? Money. All you could want. At least for a few years. And I know you like money. Why kill for 2,000 a head when for doing much less, you can get a great deal more than that? Where is it? I'll tell you, Silver. You've got to find the leader of those bandits, whoever he is. The money hasn't been divided. He must have it all. How do you know this? Uh, well, that's what they're saying. And who are they? Oh, everybody. There's a couple of friends of mine would be willing to help you. It's better than your old bounty killing. Will you do it, Silver? A couple of friends who could help me? Where are they? Then you're with us. Not so fast. First of all, I want to see your friends. All right, I'll take you to meet them. In the shack there. Oh. This is getting to be monotonous. Get in, Get in there. Uh. You did it. Good for you, Beth. It was simple. He's as stupid as the day he was born. One way or another, we've caught you, Silver. That's a matter of opinion. If I'm not mistaken, it was me that was looking for you. And don't look so smug, miss. You didn't fool me for one second. That's enough of your smart talk, Silver. Now there's something we want to find out from you. Which is? Who's the bandit leader? Sorry, I'm not able to tell you that. <coughs> I'm afraid you've all been wasting your time, miss. Give it to him, Reg. Now maybe you'll change your mind and talk a little. You sure ask funny questions. You're part of the band. You ask who your leader is. Don't play the fool, Silver. Both of us was brought in by our friend Austin. And when we saw the others, they had their masks on. The two of us, we only knew Austin, but you know who the leader was. What makes you think that? I heard you speaking about it. Tonight, you told the sheriff. I don't believe you. You mean you listen to what the customers have to say? <coughs> Why don't you stop? You ain't very funny. <laughs> Pretty clever, your boss. He convinced you to leave the money with him until you'd made your last big haul. That's what he said. And instead of that, he eliminated the only person among you who would know him. So there was no chance of your finding him. That's why Austin was killed. Who's foolish now, me or you? Getting anywhere. I propose we pool our information and go to work together on Quit it. Quit stalling, eh? Silver. We're asking for the name of the boss. For example, we could try and calculate how the band was made up. Two are dead, and two are you. One is the boss, 
And the two are missing. There's only one, I'd say. We already know who the other is. Really? Yeah, it's you. Me? We both of us recognized you. Oh, but didn't you tell me your gang met already masked? There's some piece that you keep whistling when you get nervous. Sandy and me recognized you right away. Now we want to know who the leader is. So that after I told you, you can kill me, right? And perhaps even with my own gun. So that you could say I committed suicide. Smart, aren't you? Now, that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. I never thought of that. Tell us. We will let you go free. In fact, we'll give you a share. How can I be sure? You got my word for it. <laughs> That's the best one I heard since my granny used to tell me fairy stories. That's enough of your foolishness. We want action from you. Why not? <laughs> Why, you... <laughs> I'm sorry, miss, but I have no choice. And now it's your turn. I've got some questions for you. <laughs> I told you I could be of use to you, didn't I, Mr. Silver? This time you didn't get rid of me like you thought. You see, I followed your buggy tracks out here. It was easy. Yeah, you've helped me, all right. I wanted one of them alive. But he was going to kill you, Mr. Silver. And the pistol wasn't loaded. I guess I shouldn't count on anything going right when I've got a young idiot following me around. Give them a good funeral. Here. They've got enough money on them to pay for the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go and cash in your dead man. That's what you wanted to do, wasn't it? Come. I sure have exclusive rights, yes, sir. If I were you, I'd lock this young lady up, Sheriff. Why? Well, just a precaution. I don't think she knows too much. But people could think otherwise. And there's too many bullets flying around these days. She's a bit dishonest, sorry to say. And she keeps bad company. But nevertheless, we shouldn't waste good merchandise. And your grandmother couldn't abide waste, I know. <laughs> You're working for the bank. But Janet, we're gonna get married, you know. When you're able to support a family, we'll start talking about marriage. Until then, I work. Janet. Is following people your specialty? Now, don't lose your temper, Judd. I want to talk to Mr. Silver alone. Are you working at the bank? Yes, Mr. Averill gave me the position that used to be held by my father. Is that what you wanted to talk about? No. Thinking things over, I had an idea. To recheck your father's papers? Mm -mm. It was something else. Good evening. Will you gentlemen allow me? Yes, sir, you can take that seat there. That's kind of Thanks. You're going in for high stakes this evening, I see. If the stakes aren't high, the game's no fun. I open with 20. You're 20, and I raise you 20. But don't you look at your down card for your bet? Mind your own business, boy. You staying in?
I raise it. Fifty dollars. Another 50 to stay in. For 50. And another 100. I'm out. I'll see you. There's the 100. Hmm. You're real happy with your two aces, aren't you, Ramirez? Another king. Isn't that nice? Something told me. Mr. Ramirez. You haven't looked at your down card. Why not? This way, it's more fun. I wait for that final surprise. You aren't going to look at it even now? Why should I? I won, didn't I? Gentlemen, who's dealing? Just you and me, Spot. What do you make? Two hundred. I'm going to trust in my luck tonight. You're two hundred and five hundred. Queens. And uh, here, oh, we have a stray. I'm in. Look at that down card of yours. Sorry. See, the luck's still with me. Thanks. 
Don't you dare do that again. Katie. Go call the sheriff. Quick. You're getting that dead man's hand of yours again, Ramirez. I'm told that it brings you good luck. I heard it from your friend Austin. I don't know anyone with the name of Austin. Really? That's strange. Steal the cards. Three hundred and fifty. Oh, good for you. You've decided to make the game exciting. Three hundred and fifty. Now, here. Three hundred I don't know how you do it, but I know that you've been cheating. If you're down cards a king, I'll kill you. And I'll have every right to do so. but they brought you here for nothing, Sheriff. There's not a chance that you can pull me in. It's a clear case of self-defense. Maybe there's something you could do. Search this man's belongings. I'll bet you anything you'll find a gray shirt, like the one you found in the room of those two saloon guards. Keep him for me. Tomorrow I'll go to the bank and cash him in. Wait a minute. I have to talk to you. Go ahead. Not here, Silver. It's important. And later. I have to put a piece of cheese in a trap. All right, then. The saloon closes in an hour. I'll wait upstairs. Will you be there? Yes, I'll be there.
Drop that gun and stay where you are. Silver, you ain't in your room? It doesn't look like it, does it, Spot? One can enter and can also get out of windows. I wanted to see you without anyone knowing about it. I can believe that. The fact is, you were planning to shoot me full of lead. What are you saying, Silver? That shotgun you got up there. What's that for, to play me a serenade? The shotgun? Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You remember how some of them passengers on that coach was riddled with shotgun bullets? Well, I found that shotgun. Guess where it was? Where you hit it. And now you were planning to use it again. Oh, be reasonable. The last few days, I've had lots of chances to sneak up on you and kill you. And I don't mean through windows. Why didn't I do it then, Silver? You were waiting to hear from me who your boss is. But instead, tonight, something happened. I had to be killed. Isn't that the truth? You knew I was dangerous when I saw you drop on the table that bullet you picked up last night. What made you take the bullet? Because it shone in the moonlight? I like the looks of it. Does that mean something? Yeah. You knew my gun had been unloaded. So you shot the saloon bouncer before he could talk, like you shot Craddock. It could only have been you. Because you were the only one there yesterday when Alonzo told me about the well. Now you're going to say I killed Austin. No, you didn't kill Austin. You were all of you too anxious to keep him in good health. All, but your phantom-like boss. No, Silver. No, please. Don't shoot me. No. No, please don't. I can still help you. No. Silver. You're no good boy. You're the worst of them all. The other ones were just bandits. But you were also a traitor. I swear it wasn't none of it my fault. It was that Ramirez who you killed. I, he was the one who gave the orders and I obeyed them. When I realized that I was a part of it, it was already too late. I think you knew about this, Silver. You could have killed me just now, but no, you didn't. You only wounded me. That, that means that you understood or else, or else you wouldn't have spared me, would you? Ah! That's exactly what I was asking myself. But I guess it was just a case of bad shooting. Alive, you weren't worth a dime. But dead, you're worth $2,000. What do you want with Janet? Leave her alone and get on your way. Oh, it's you. Yes. I heard a sound here. A rather strange one. Oh, uh, it was me knocking. It did sound kind of funny. Well, come in, please. Thank you. Some good words of advice, and I hope I can use them. Sit down, Silver, and I'll fix you some coffee.
I have to go now. I have things to do. Judd, did he attack you again? What a fool. He's no fool. He's in love. And men in love behave like fools. You talk as though you'd also been in love. I was. But now, for companion, I have a friend named Colt. Marry him, Janet. I'm sure he'll make you happy. He has a habit of losing battles. But with time, you realize this isn't a bad virtue for a husband. took your time. What do you think you're doing? Play it hard to get? Well, for sorry, I had things to take care of. Oh, nothing very exciting. You know how it is. Duty before pleasure. Yeah? That's what my granny always said. Let's forget your granny. And let's forget pleasure. We have to talk business. Really? Then let's talk. I'll soon be out of the job, so I could do with a new one. It's not a new job I'm talking about. It's the job that you're doing now. How much more do you think you'll collect? Why, you want me to invest it here? Uh, let me think. I should collect another 16,000, three corpses, and of course the final bonus. What would you say to 25,000 on condition that you'd leave everything and go away? $25,000? That's quite a sum. And who would be the benefactor? That's none of your business. Do you take it? Hmm. Sorry. It's quite a nice offer, doll, but it's not enough. Don't be so greedy. Why isn't it enough for you? It's much more than you'd make from your work. That's true. But the, shall I say, benefactor will make much more. To be exact, $286,000.43. The haul from the coach robberies which will be his, now that I've helped him do away with all the men that were with him there. What can you do about it? Nobody knows who he is. I know who he is. Don't talk nonsense. At times like this, I never talk nonsense. Then I'm sorry for you, Silver. After all, you were a good friend. You sound as if you're bidding farewell. <laughs> Come on now, get up. I don't hold with shooting people in the back anyway. All right, out of there. After all, we don't have to be introduced, do we? We're old friends, aren't we, Mr. Abram? For some time now, I've been suspecting that it was either you, the sheriff, or Parker. You three were the only ones who knew which coaches were carrying the cash. Tonight, I learned for sure that it was you. You see, when you took on Janet Sullivan, it wasn't to do a good deed. It was to put your bank's accounts in the hands of someone incompetent who wouldn't notice the shortages that you'd been covering hastily whenever you had the cash. Only you didn't know that old Herb Sullivan had trained Janet to be a first-class accountant. Strange, isn't it? A girl who keeps books. Looks like poor Judd doesn't know what he's in for. He'll be lucky if he gets money for cigarettes. As for poker, he... That's enough, Silver. Drop your gun, and don't move. How stupid I was. I should have gotten rid of you before. But unfortunately, I, I just can't shoot a woman. I admire them too much. No, I'm paying for it. Drop your gun, I said. Looks as if you've won, Mr. Averill. Why don't you shoot? You're not going to die right now, and especially not here... Of course. We might uh, compromise the young lady. And we are gentlemen, aren't we? Oh, Mr. Silver, I started to work on... Oh! Well, if it isn't my most loyal employee. 
Loyal and industrious. You just keep him up, friend. Now I don't have to waste time tracking her down. It'd be just as well if this stuff disappeared. There we are. Hide this first, then call the sheriff. He will be told that our friend here was caught in the act of stealing the bank's money. But he'll talk. No, he won't talk. He'll make a run for it, and I'll find it necessary to shoot him down. And the girl? Uh, it's too bad, but I'm afraid the poor young lady was killed by Silver when she caught him rifling the safe. Remember to say that she was dead when we got here. He's right, Doc. You've gotten into this, so you have to get out of it by killing the girl. No, Avril, we can't do that. We'll do as I say. There's no other way we can save things. The cash and your respectability, right? Yeah, but this is going too far and you mustn't do it. Don't worry, Mr. Avril. I've got everything under control. John, do you know what you've done? Him. Judd, oh, how is it possible that one man can be so stupid? You but ruined Janet. everything, you know that. I never want to see you again. Never, what never. What I do, tell me. Never come near me. Stick at it, fool. You block it, you idiot. What I do? Oh. Let him go. Take a good look at him, doll. Yeah, that's the man for whom you've given up everything. Look at that. He's running. He's getting away. He's leaving you holding the bag. Silver. Now we'll see which one of us is smarter.
What's going on, Judd? Ask Silva. I killed Averill. Case of self-defense? Well, if you want to look in the bag that Averill was taken with him, you'll find the money and the proof. And if that's not enough, the lady here will tell you the rest. She's all yours, Sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Thank you, Miss Janet. Don't forget what I told you last night. And hurry up with your investigation. You in a hurry to collect? Not in the least. Mr. Abel paid me in advance. He sure was a gentleman. Amica mia, mi sei rimasta solo tu. Io non ho più un volto amico da Amica mia, non ho un paese dove andare, né una donna che ho pianto in gola aspetti me. Di ciò che ho fatto sai, di quello che farò, nessuno mi ringrazierà. Yeah. 